I welcome Onara's All right. We're playing the Winds Protection Paladin or the Prop Pally. And uh yeah. I promise this video is not going to be an hour long or 2 hours long like some of my other videos. We're going to try to keep this very short. A lot more focus on we must retake not diving into all the different talents when granite's blood soaks the ground and just kind of looking more big picture as far as what's the prop paladin good at why play a prop paladin compared to uh other uh tanks that sort of thing Taking the weapons. Uh, so. Whoops, I forgot. I need to take off some gear here. Uh. Whoops. Yeah. So, yeah. The protection paladin. Because we're just in a heroic, as usual. So. 368 eye level is a bit high. So, yeah, Protection Paladins definitely ain't no Prot Warrior. Uh, Prot Warrior's got way better mobility, better damage, probably better survivability. Uh, so... Then it's like, okay, why would I play a Prot Warrior? <laughs> Uh, this is one of the reasons why. The battle has turned. The weapons are ours. Uh. So yeah, we as a protection paladin can do a shitload of healing to our teammates. So if we actually look at uh, current segment like I uh, usually do. We'll look at how much healing we did here to our teammates during that hole which went wrong because somebody aggroed other guys. So yeah, we did like 400,000 healing on that pole. To our teammates uh, because there's a talent in the protection paladin tree where your word of glory which is your one of your holy power spenders can be used on allies with a uh, like they when you, it can always be used on allies but it gives them the uh, big bonus no one's moved over here to shoot the guy. That's annoying. Tank should never have to do that. So yeah, like I was saying, you can always hold a uh, word of glory on your allies as a paladin, but specifically as a protection paladin, you have a talent where it will do up to 250% increased damage, or excuse me, 250% increased healing when the target is low health, uh, which normally applies uh, to you. Uh, like it always applies to you, but the talent makes it apply to whoever uses it on, so. It uh, the storm must be quiet and the elemental lets you help out your healer a lot. 
join the Kanu Mantra. Their primalist allies have placed totems that protect this raging tempest. Hunt them and destroy them. Uh, so that's kind of the main reason I'd say for playing Protection Paladin. Is, uh... Out of all the tanks, it's the only one that can really heal your allies like that. Continue your work. Uh, the next best for being able to heal your allies would probably be like the druid, uh, the guardian druid, as far as tanks goes. Uh, but. Uh, They still don't have like nowhere near as much the power. that they can do in a large burst of healing like we did there. Uh, so yeah, let's see what else is Protection Paladin good at? Uh, Protection Paladin is the best tank for interrupts. Uh, as, uh, it's got a regular interrupt, like most classes in the game, but it's a Avenger shield thing where you throw the little bouncing shield out. The first target Avenger shield hits, uh, will be interrupted if they're in the middle of casting a spell. So it's uh So because of that the protection paladin has more interrupt capabilities than everybody else. Which uh Generally isn't very important in raids. Take down the avatar of the storm. Uh, because in raids, you've just got so many people who can interrupt that any kind of interrupt mechanics it isn't that critical. But when it comes to dungeons, uh. Sort of the more you can carry, the better. Like, you don't have to rely on your teammates uh, nearly as much for interrupts. And even if your teammates are good at interrupting, that just means you're able to interrupt uh, less important casts that can be interrupted but usually aren't interrupted so just basic spell things instead of like the the big important ones Today we use Onara's gifts to free her. We will journey to Nokudin Hold. Ah, uh, outsider. Valakar's power grows. Yeah, Action Paladin, as with any Paladin, does have Divine Shield and Lay on Hands and Clan Blessing of Protection, and Blessing of Freedom. Today, uh, those aren't. Too important in general. I think the one I use the most is uh, Divine Shield because you can get a talent where uh, Divine Shield uh, 
when you use it. Oops. Uh, when you use Divine Shield, it taunts all nearby enemies. So, because uh, normally when you use Divine Shield, the enemies, uh, while you're immune, they uh, just attack other targets instead. Oh, yeah. Face my this is one of those areas where having the extra interrupts is really nice. The main thing you want to interrupt is the uh, death bolt volleys or whatever. Those ones. But if you're going to interrupt all these other death bolts also, that's nice too. Should have the second damage, I guess. Looking at the healing meters doesn't really help out. Only looking at the healing breakdown at the end really helps. The first ancestors shall rise. So yeah, we do a lot of like fairly decent AoE type of damage, but when it comes to single targets, we're definitely not too good. This boss, we just want to tank the melee guy on top of the range guy. Okay, he's jumping over here. I share a health pool, so... Doesn't really matter which one you attack. A little bit of help on the healing. Shield at the wrong one. Peace at last. Protect my children. So we want to go here. Clan Tirai will join our Khan at Nokudan Hold. Uh, so yeah, we talked about the protection paladin's good at healing primarily your allies and my storm will bring forth a mightier maruk greatness awaits us interrupts it also has a poison and disease cleanse which the uh the monk also has that 
but uh, Paladin takes a little more meta than the monk. So we kind of lost our teammates. What they do? Use the divine shield there because I didn't get quite out of the stun in time. there. No other tank can quite do that. <laughs> the uh, divine toll for the protection paladin doesn't throw out uh, judgments like it does for uh, the rep paladin. It throws out the uh, Avengers shields at nearby enemies. So, it's sort of an AoE interrupt. Not quite. If there's like 10 enemies and 5 of them are casters, uh, chances are you're not going to interrupt them all because it's only the initial targets that get interrupted by it. Uh, but, uh,. In that case, there's Alakar, who's immune, and four caster dudes, which that part is kind of annoying normally, uh, just because the caster dudes are so far apart. But because we're a protection paladin, we can uh, divine toll. It throws the shields out and interrupts them all at the same time. So definitely a great spot right there to be a protection paladin uh yeah so we can see on the damage we're not doing too great on the damage uh, for the boss fights uh we did a little bit better on Tira and Maruk since that's a two target fight so 
Uh, our multi-target damage does a little better there. Um, and I think I didn't actually... I forgot to use Avenging Wrath on the last boss there. Uh, I was saving it for after the intermission phase. Because uh, in that fight, the last phase of the boss fight is the most annoying when the uh, all the lightning bolts come down. Uh, so it's like... And you, yeah, it's... Uh, I was saving it, and then I forgot to use it. Uh, so... Uh, I didn't even end up using my trinket on him. Uh, specifically because the... Uh, Protection Paladin's not that great for damage. Definitely recommend a unused damage trinket if you can get one. Uh, yeah, generally you don't really need tanking trinkets on the tank specs currently. Uh, unless you're doing like some kind of really hard content. Uh, so, yeah. Let's see. So, general gameplay of the Protection Paladin is uh, you're going to use Blessed Hammer is kind of your most basic ability. Uh, that's from a talent over here. You don't have to get it. Normally, it's uh, it starts off as Crusader Strike, uh, just like the uh, uh, Rep Paladin. And then, but if you get this talent here, that's where it throws out this spinning hammer around you instead of being a normal single target attack. Your other option for that talent is it deals still a bunch of, uh, it's still mostly a single target attack, but it deals some kind of uh, splash AoE holy damage stuff. Uh, but when you change it to Blessed Hammer, you lose, uh, essentially you lose all the single target damage, but it makes enemies hit you it for less damage. Um, so it's, uh, it shows up as you'll see here in our overall data. In our healing, Blessed Hammer, it shows up as 8% of all the healing I did in the dungeon. So, it's, uh, it's a pretty decent choice for dungeons. I don't think you would use Blessed Hammer, um, for anything other than dungeons, though. Uh, just because you uh, lose out on single target damage. Um, so yeah, that's one of your basic uh, holy power generating abilities. You also have Judgment. Um, judgment is your best single target damage ability. Um, so... Yeah. Judgment's... Definitely a good button to press. Hammer of Wrath is almost as much damage as Judgment. Um, but you can only use it on enemies with less than 20% health, or you can use it all the time in uh, Avenging Wrath, when you have Avenging Wrath going. So it's... Uh, We go look at our overall damage done. Uh, you see Judgment happens to be up there at the top. Sometimes it's not at the top. It depends on different things. But uh, let's see. So you see down there, Hammer of Wrath was less than 2% of my damage. If I was better at using it as a execute and better at using avenging wrath more frequently like i should um then we would definitely see significantly more hammer breath damage uh but 
Yeah. It doesn't get a ton of use. But it but like I said, it does almost as much damage as judgment, which is our best single target damage. So you really want to use Hammer of Wrath uh essentially anytime you can. Um yeah, so that's your main uh holy power generating abilities, and then you have uh, you have your Concentration, which you drop on the ground, which does a bit of damage. It's, uh, how much? 11% of my total damage. Not great, but you might as well press it. And you have some talents that make it do a little bit more. But, um, yeah. And then we have Avenger's Shield. Like I said, that's it's the bouncing shield that you throw out, and it interrupts the first target it hits. Um, well, actually, it silences the first target it hits and interrupts. Um, but some enemies are immune to silence, so uh, in those cases, it only interrupts. Um. So yeah, Avenger Shield does like half as much damage as a judgment, but it bounces to multiple targets. Uh and we have talents that make it do lots of stuff. So if you look at the talent tree, and if you look at uh Avengers Shield, well, see there's a lot of talents around Avengers Shield. It's kind of your main ability as a protection paladin. Uh, I want it. Yeah. So let's look at what all these things do regarding Avengers Shield. So first thing is uh normally it bounces to 3 targets. Uh, you can get this talent here where it jumps to two extra targets. I should say more normally it bounces twice, so it hits a total of three targets. Um, the talent here makes it bounce to two additional targets, which means, uh, it will, uh, hit a total of five targets. Uh, so you're, you can instead, if you want, get this one where it only hits one target, doesn't bounce at all, but it deals double damage. Um, so that's obviously a single target damage type of thing, which you'd probably use in raids. Um, which makes it. Almost as good as Judgment. Um, basically the same as a Hammer of Wrath as far as damage goes. Um, but for dungeons, I definitely recommend jump the two extra bounces. Um, uh, but why else do we want extra bounces? So... Well, it has this 13-second uh, cooldown. I think it's like 15 seconds with haste or something. Or without haste. Uh, but Grand Crusader is a talent where when you avoid a melee attack or use Blessed Hammer, you have a 20% chance to reset the remaining cooldown on Avengers Shield. So... Um, yeah. Blessed Hammers has a chance to reset the cooldown of Avenger Shield, but also, uh, when you avoid a melee attack. What do they mean by avoid a melee attack? Well, they mean, like, parry, basically. So... 
you also have a very small chance to dodge, but uh, your chance of pairing is a bit better. And specifically, crit rating gives you parry chance, similar to a warrior. Um, but also, there's a talent over here you can get where each target hit by Avenger's shield gives you... 2% parry for 15 seconds. So this gives you up to 10% extra parry chance when there's a bunch of enemies. Um, so the parry chance gets up a decent amount. Uh, so you uh, get a lot more Grand Crusader procs when there's more enemies uh because of this extra parry chance, but also because it's just more enemies attacking you. So the frequency at which you're pairing goes up. Um, so yeah, we get, so, so far we're, we've looked at more bounces for more Avenger shield damage and uh, the ability to reset Avenger Shield. Uh, but we got a couple more things as well. One of them is Tears Enforcer. Avenger Shield deals a thousand AoE splash damage. Uh, every for every target it hits. So. Tears Enforcer will show up on the damage meters. Here is 14% uh, of my damage in the whole dungeon. So it's a very significant amount of, uh, of AoE damage that you get out of that. Not very good for single target, of course. Uh, but uh, well, we could look at it. Uh, let's look at the first boss because that's only single target. Um, so in that case, it was less than 1% of all my damage. So, very big difference uh, between how effective it is for AoE versus uh, single target. Uh, so yeah, a bunch of AoE damage there. And then the other main thing for uh, Avenger Shield is this talent, Bulwark of Order. Avenger Shield also shields you for 8 seconds, absorbing half the damage it dealt, up to 30% of your maximum health. So, if we look on the healing meters for the whole dungeon, Bulwark of Order was... Uh, 13% of all the healing I did. Uh, so it's more than the Blessed Hammer healing. It's more than this Light of the Titans talent over here. Um, it's more than the Golden Path, uh, Golden Path and Judgment of Light talents over here. Um, uh, so it's, uh, yeah, definitely a decent amount of healing, which you, uh, get from doing lots of Avenger shields. And then on top of all of that, to synergize with all of that, we have Divine Toll, which throws Avenger shields at up to five targets within 30 yards. So the Divine Toll Avenger Shields get all these bonuses. So when you use Divine Toll, you get a lot of Bulwark of Order Shield from it. And you get a lot of Tears Enforcer damage. Uh, so it's a very big uh, burst of both damage and uh, healing, basically. Um, so that's why Divine Toll is pretty nice. Um, 
That's... Yeah, so there's there's a couple other things for it, Avenger Shield. Uh, one of them is this one bottom center. Avenger Shield increases the damage of your next Shield of the Righteous by 20% for each target hit by Avenger Shield, stacking up to five times, and increases the radius. So our Shield of the Righteous damage is also buffed by Avengers Shield. Um so we can uh look at our damage again. Uh so Shield of the Righteous is uh so you yeah you have two holy power spenders as a protection paladin. One of them's the word of glory heal uh and then the other one is Shield of the Righteous. Shield of the Righteous deals AoE damage. Not a lot. Uh, but it's still more than what Word of Glory does. Um, uh, and then it also increases your armor for a short amount of time. So it's sort of like... Uh, sort of like uh, on a protection a prop warrior uh ideally you spend all your holy power on shield of the righteous just because it deals damage and on a prop warrior ideally you spend all your rage on execute slash uh revenge just because they deal damage um uh, Shield of Light just does give you the armor, so it's does have a defensive component to it. Um, but generally, uh, Word of Glory sort of, sort of does more. So it's uh, uh, as like as far as defensively goes, it's because it's a huge chunk of heal. So yeah. Um, so yeah, we're doing, uh, quite a few Shield of the Righteouses, which will frequently do, uh, significant extra damage because of that talent at the bottom of the tree. Otherwise, our Shield of the Righteous damage would be significantly less. Um, all right. So there's talents farther down here for even more Avenger Shield stuff, which I don't get. Um, I don't think they're bad, but uh, one of them is Avenger Shield deals extra damage to its primary target, so better single target damage for the most part. Um, which this is just really it's just one of those filler talents that isn't supposed to be very good. Uh, just on the way to the talent at the bottom, which is really good. Uh, which is Moment of Glory. For the next 15 seconds, you generate an Absorb Shield for 20% of all damage you deal. And Avenger Shield damage is increased by 20%. And its cooldown is reduced by 75%. So, uh, basically, you're spamming even more Avenger Shields during this time. And it gives you even more def defensive shielding um and those avenger shields do a little bit more damage so it's like a win 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 like super good cooldown ability there um but uh i haven't decided if i really want to give up anything to get it so that's why I don't currently have it. It is very good, though. Uh, let's see. What else does Protection Warrior do? Um, yeah. I didn't want to get too far into talents, so... Let's see if there's anything else I really want to talk about. Um, well, we can talk real quick. So, you definitely get Avenging Wrath. 
Uh, and, uh, yeah. Get your Avenging Wrath for, uh, damage cooldown stuff. And there's talents over here where each holy power you spend reduces the cooldown of Avenging Wrath. As well as Guardian of Ancient Kings, which is your five minute big uh, damage reduction ability. Um, so, uh, this allows you to use Avenging Wrath more frequently, uh, which is great. You don't really want to use Guardian of Ancient Kings unless you have to, because it's a very strong cooldown. Um, so, I don't think I pressed that the whole dungeon. I usually just use uh, Ardent Defender, which is 20% uh, damage reduction. And then, apart from that, I yeah pretty much just heal with Word of Glory when needed. Heal myself with Word of Glory when needed. And other than, and then spam Shield of the Righteous. And that's kind of all the active defense type of stuff that you really need to worry about. Well, even then, Shield of the Righteous, that's more of a passive defense thing, because you're really pressing it just to do damage. You need to do damage to keep aggro up. Uh, if you aren't using lots of Shield of the Righteous, then uh, a really good DPS, you'll have a trouble keeping aggro over them. So, uh, like whenever they use their big damage cooldowns. Um, so yeah, let's see. Yeah, uh, we're still getting divine purpose so that we, uh, have free holy power spenders every now and then so that we can basically just use them on more shields of the righteous or or the glory whatever we need um um we've got this talent over here for being able to use judgment more since that's our best single target damage ability uh, and the Word of Glory one that lets you deal big healing to your teammates. Let's see how much I actually did to the teammates there. So healing done. Uh, so 63% of all the healing I did was to myself. And the rest of it was teammates. Um, so, like, all the bur all the bulwark of order and blessed hammer stuff is, of course, only to myself, um, but I did a bunch of word of glories to my teammates, and then some of my passive healing from, uh, Golden Path and Judgment of Light, and also goes to the teammates. And then the Light of the Titans is just the talent for extra healing over time from your Word of Glory. So, yeah. Pretty good amount of healing to your teammates. The The, the real key is that uh, you're using the Word of Glory specifically where it's most useful is... Uh, those difficult times where uh, the healer's having trouble uh, healing everybody. Uh, it's like when the whole team takes like half their health and damage. Uh, healers only have like a three minute cooldown to try to help with that, but those don't even do the, uh, those don't even, uh, like, heal all the, uh, like, uh, half your HP type of thing. Uh, they're more like 20% of your HP or something like that, so. The, uh, 
the ability to use Word of Glory to help out the healer, specifically at the uh, struggle times, is super valuable. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned earlier. I think I did the Bastion of Light ability. Your next three casts of Shield of the Righteous or Ward of Glory cost no holy power. Uh, so sometimes I use that just so that I spam more Shield of the Righteous to do more damage. Uh, which sometimes you actually have to do that. Um, just because your DPS players popped a bunch of big damage cooldowns and you need to uh, do damage to keep the aggro. Uh, but other times it's really good if you can just save that Bastion of Light um, for those emergencies like I did uh, very early in the dungeon. Uh, where somebody aggroed another pack of the centaur guys. And uh, so people were taking a bunch of damage. And then I used Bastion of Light so that I could get three free Word of Glories out to do a whole bunch of healing. So it was a very, uh, that was a very good use of that ability. Um, yeah, I ended up pretty much talking about all the talents, even though I didn't really want to, per se. Uh, there's more talents we could look at, but, uh, yeah. That's about all I wanted to really say in the video here. So, summary. Protection Paladin. Pretty decent AoE damage. Not so good at single target. Uh, but you can take a couple different talents to do a bit better at single target. Uh, let's see. Their main strengths are the ability to heal your teammates. Uh, which is far more capability of doing that than any other tank. Uh, they have better interrupt capabilities than any other tank. And the uh, ability to cleanse poisons and diseases is really nice, depending on uh, what dungeon you're in. Uh... I think that dungeon there aren't any poisons or diseases, so it was uh, useless. But uh, some of the other dungeons, like Brackenhide Hollow, has a bunch of uh, disease damage stuff that it's very helpful if you can dispel those. So, uh, also the in. Uh, that dungeon called Halls of Infusion. There's that area with the stupid poison frogs where if you take or if you get 10 stacks on you, you instantly die. So that's a great time to have people that can cleanse poisons. So yeah. Very useful to have that in some situations. And, yeah, that's the main strengths of the Protection Paladin. Definitely does not have the mobility or the damage as a Protection Warrior does. Uh, I think Protection Warriors got better survivability also, but I'm not entirely sure on that. I haven't, uh, I haven't really done enough difficult content to really uh, be able to make that claim. So, uh, but Protection Warrior has just so much uh, 
passive uh, damage reduction and healing kind of stuff that it feels ridiculously tanky. So, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. That's about it. There's protection paladin has so many uh that on my bar. Uh so many niche type of uh cooldowns like blessing of protection, blessing of sacrifice, blessing of freedom. Uh blessing of freedom is actually pretty good. Uh in certain situations. Very, very good. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, for the most part, these uh, larger cooldowns, y you don't use too much. Except, like I said, I use Divine Shield. Uh, every now and then, just because it's got the... Uh, the AoE taunt thing from the talent. Uh, so yeah. Let's, uh, let's end it there. <laughs>